Okay, got the red line. All right, welcome. Uh, this is the couple Drupal dev on Docker with Doxel doing the dirty work. Or Doxel does Drupal decoupled on Docker. <laughs> or something something alliteration decoupled. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I am JD. Uh, my title is lead software engineer at a company that didn't pay for me to be here. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm you can find me on Slack as Dorf or JD Does Dev. I stream on Twitch at JD Does Dev, and I'm Dorficus on Drupal.org. A little bit about me: I've been doing PHP and Drupal for long years. Uh, I've been doing HTML since the '90s, and I learned Basic and QBasic around the same time, thanks to a magazine, 321 Contact. Do any of you remember that? In the back, they had a program printed out that you could take and copy and then break and <laughs> spend hours upon hours figuring out what happened, which was great for learning debugging. Um, I'm also a member of the Drupal CWG Community Health and Conflict Resolution Team. Uh, now, so I do have a disclaimer here. Um, to get the most out of this, it'll help you if you have some knowledge of Docker, command line, Drupal, and understand a little bit about decoupled architecture. Uh, you don't have to be an expert in any of these. This is more of a demonstration of how to put some things together, but it does help if you know the concepts and understand what these words are. Also, if you're on a Windows machine, I am completely useless to you right now. So <laughs> I, I can't, I have not had good experiences getting Docker and Windows playing nicely together. So what we're going to be covering is a basic set, setup of a decoupled monorepo. And what I mean by monorepo is the front end in this case Gatsby and the back end Drupal are all in the same GitHub repository. They're all going to live in the same code base. They're all going to, oh, when we push up, it's all going to be together. Um, but this is front end agnostic. Any front end, you know, be it next, next, um, buzzword, buzzword, front end, new thing, uh, can be used with some customization. Um, what we're not going to cover I'm not going to get too deep into React development or setup. I'm not going to get into configuring Webpack or anything like that. Uh, for recommendations, Vite is wonderful for that. Um, I'm not going to get into all the required modules for decoupled. Start with JSON API and go from there. And I'm not going to get into your questionable life choices. Those are on you. Um, but if there is anything that I am completely wrong about, Please feel free to correct me. I prefer in a stern yet gentle manner. Don't yell at me, please. So let's get into the actual stuff. A brief overview of Docker and Doxel and containerized decoupled architecture. We're going to get high level of all of these, um, but we're going to focus mostly on the containerized decoupled architecture. So let's talk about Docker. Docker. Um, for all of you have probably seen the whale. It's obligatory. I think that if I don't put the whale on a presentation that I mentioned Docker in, they charge me a hundred bucks or something. Um, but there are a ton alternatives to it. We'll get into that a little bit later. So a little bit about Docker. Um, it's based on Linux containers. There's a lot to get into there, but we're going to gloss over a lot of it. Basically, Linux containers are formed using control groups and namespaces on a Linux kernel. Um, all Docker containers are Linux containers, but not all Linux containers are Docker containers. Does that make sense? So you can have containers without Docker. Docker is more of a, uh, it's a tool that orchestrates and runs the containers and gives them a place to, to live. Uh, there are alternatives. Um, Podman, Rancher Desktop, Lima, those are all Linux container uh, applications that will run them. I don't, I haven't really used any of them extensively, so I can't say which one would work better, but uh, if you're interested, something to look into. Um, Docker, again, is not containers. It gives containers a place to live. It provides the resources for containers to run. 
Um, images define containers. An image is not a container. It's a set of instructions to create the container. Um, and containers, does everybody know what I mean by container? Does anybody not know what I mean by container? That might be. Okay. I'll take your silence as consent that you do know. So, <laughs> how, how do you define containers? Um, the, the thing on top of the whale in that slide, a few. <laughs> okay. uh, a container is just a grouped set of resources for a usually a singular purpose, is the way that I look at it. Um, and containers are not permanent. That's a big thing. When you shut down or destroy a container, it's gone. Next time that you start it up, it's going to be exactly the set of instructions that you have in your image. And now we look at a weird bug in my slide here where it animates everything a second time. All right. However, we can't have storage persist with volumes. A volume is um, a set of, not a set, but a section of a hard disk that is cordoned off to be used by containers or, or Docker services. Um, services, word that I just used, are containers that are connected together with a common goal. Like in a larger application, usually you have a few containers running, a few images uh, put together, and those are called services technically. Another interesting thing that not a lot of people, well, a lot of people know, but not a lot of people think about is that Docker Desktop, uh, if you're using Windows or Mac, is a Linux VM. So if you spin up Docker De Desktop, you actually have a virtual machine running. How that's different from VirtualBox and you know, other things we'll get into a little bit later, but it is something to keep in mind. Docker containers will not run on their own on Windows or Mac. And again, some of the alternatives, Rancher Desktop, Podman, Lima, there are a couple others out there, but I, I haven't tested any of them really extensively. So your mileage may vary. All right, so like I said, it's a high level. Everybody memorize this. There's going to be a quiz at the end. All right. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, so there are three main parts to Docker. Uh, the client is what you usually work with on the command line. That's where you run the commands. Those go to your Docker host, which is your Docker desktop, or if you're on a Linux, like the System76 that I see right there, <laughs> which is a great system. Um, I have one at home that I, <laughs> I really like. Uh, runs the commands, goes to the daemon, which either go, pulls the images from the registry, Docker Hub, or something else. It could be private registry. Or if the image is already saved, it just spins that image up into a container. Does that make sense? OK. So let's talk about Doxel. Does anybody not know what Doxel is? OK, a lot more hands this time. Um, Doxel is a containerized uh, local development setup based in, or that runs on top of Docker. Uh, it's similar to DDEV, Lando, things like that. So if you've used those, it's very similar, same kind of concept. Uh, one of the main differences is Doxel is completely written in Bash. So the entire binary is Bash scripting. If you look at, um, if you download Doxel and you look at the binary and you know Bash, you know what's going on there. <coughs> Excuse me. The advantage to that is that you don't need to download additional software. It's very, very lightweight um, when you pull it down because most of the time you have Bash script, whether it's a Z, Z shell, uh, Fish, Bash, whatever, you have it available on your system. It use, utilizes Docker services. Like I said, those are containers that are connected through uh, Docker Compose. Any command that needs to be run from the container or in the container uses fin, which is just a way of saying we're running it inside a container. We're not doing this on our host machine. It's highly configurable. We'll see that in a few moments here. And because the applications are fully containerized, it's extremely portable between developers. Uh, the biggest problem that I've run, well, one of the biggest problems I run into as a developer on a team is, well, it worked on my machine. Have any of you run into that? Well, it worked fine. Oh, I don't know why it broke in production. With a containerized development environment, um, 
everybody who has it has the exact same hardware, uh, quote unquote hardware, because they're using the same images, using the same setup, everything, and you can get it to match production almost one to one. So let's look at the basic architecture of Doxel and Docker Compose. So in a containerized dev environment, you got your infrastructure, which is you know all your system services, your uh, virtualization, the host machine, all the resources from that, and then Docker itself is what's going to do the communication between the two. Um, your system services, these are services that are shared across every container that you have. They're available to every container. They're available to every um, application that you're running. So if you have one application uh, and each of these shades of green are a different application, uh, if you have one, two, 17, they're still all going to use the same DNS, SSH agent, and VHost proxy. Uh, now on top of that, each application has its own services. CLI is where your PHP runs for the sake of uh, Drupal, your database, web, which can be Apache, Nginx, whatever, Memcache, or, or Redis. These are all containerized, very lightweight, um, and they all share the resources. Now, to contrast that, if you're using a virtual machine, yeah, you've got the infrastructure on your host machine with the virtualization, hypervisor, uh, whichever your system uses, but each app that you have has an entire operating system built up, which is pretty heavy. It can really eat up your resources quickly, and it's difficult to run you know, two or three of those at a time, let alone the 17 that I mentioned a second ago. Any questions up to this point? Okay. So hopefully you have a decent enough understanding of Docker and Doxel to get started on the actual reason that you're all here, and hopefully that's to learn how to start something. Uh, so let's start up something simple, okay? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, so for a Docker project, or a Doxel project, bin project, hmm? We're not a room on mine. Oh, it's not showing the thing. So it's asking to name my project. So I'm just gonna do test AVL. There we go. And you can see here uh, a Doxel quick way to set up different applications. And I don't know if I can scroll down here. Yeah, so just a few that are spun up really easily. Drupal 10, 9, which we're going to be getting rid of soon. 7, WordPress, Laravel. And we've even got a couple Go and JavaScript stuff. Uh, in addition, if you have a custom Git repo that you just want to pull down and put Doxel in, you can do that as well. So I'm going to do a where's my cursor moment. There it is. And just do a composer Drupal. So it clones it down. Uh, this may take a little bit more time if you do it yourself, but I pulled down all the images earlier because I didn't know how the Wi-Fi was going to be. So it shouldn't take too long at all to get pulled up. So this is just using a very basic setup. Um, if you can't see in the back, just three containers or three services, database, CLI, and web one, which is just our web server. I believe it's Apache by default. And that should go pretty quickly, I hope, because it should be cached, but I'm going to take a drink anyway. And watch you all watch it with anticipation to see if it breaks. Well, let's go in. Any questions up till now? Okay. Oh. You'll get into this, but uh, how does it handle logging? How does it handle what? Logging. logging. Um, each container or each service has its own logging. Uh -huh. So 
let me get into here really quick. You can see at the. <laughs> you mean like for for PHP logging or yeah, like debug, D-blog debug or, or okay, just in general. Yeah. All right. So before I get to that, um, you see it spits out the the URL that's going to be available at. I messed up something on my own system. This isn't normal, but for some reason, I haven't had been, well, haven't been able to track it down. Ordinarily, where is this thing? It will automatically add the host or that URL to your host file, or it will auto not automatically add it, but it will it'll route it correctly. But I messed something up on my system, so this next step probably won't apply to you. Uh, could you, in a nutshell, summarize what Fin is as an application when you call it? It's a very big bash script that with all the instructions for any commands that you want to run. The, the basis of it is if you uh, prefix something with Fin, it's saying, okay, we're not running this on the host machine, this computer, we're running it in the containers, uh, whichever container it's directed to. And there are a bunch of custom command or default commands that are available that if you run like fin drush, it says, okay, we're going to the CLI container, we're running drush in the doc root folder. Whatever the doc root, the web root that you choose in your configuration files is. All right, so now <coughs> hopefully I've lost my tab. Okay, there it is. So yeah, spun up a site. It's all set to go. Um, granted, it's a default site, not much to it, but now you have a Drupal application, didn't take that long to go, didn't have to deal with any of the setup or database connections, anything like that. Uh, other thing, let me get back, sorry, it's, I'm not mirroring, so it's hard to see, <laughs> crank my head at the right time. Other thing I wanted to show is that why is it? It's supposed to be following the thing. There we go. Okay. Just, uh, just um, I'm enough lost. It. Could I ask when you uh, pulled up the fin command? Were you pulling from? Uh, uh, did you pre-configure it to pull from repositories on your local machine or? No, those are all starter projects, just boilerplates that we have on the Doxel repo, or in the Doxel organization repos. So each of those is a separate repo that you can pull down from. Uh, to install Doxel, it's a I don't remember the exact command, but it's a bash command. We can show that really quick. Maybe. got the, the install instructions here, but basically it's just run this command and it'll pull down the Doxel uh, stacks, which we'll, I'll get into in just a little bit, all the services, um, and pull down the repo. So if you want to check this out, it's <coughs> doxel.io is the website with everything, and there's a link to the docs there. All right. The so other thing I wanted to show is, you know, we have the, the local or settings local or local settings depending on how I'm feeling that day. Um, 
And the change that Doxel does is it adds settings Doxel PHP to your site's default uh, settings folder or site's default folder, which you can change as needed. And in there is where it does all the routing to. Well, it's probably easier if I do it from here. To the database and everything. Um, and you could add in extra things if you need to. Like, I have some memcache settings in here that I have commented out, but if you want to use memcache to really simulate, like, Acquia or something, that's available as well. All right. So, any questions on that, on, on setting up just a basic site? Okay. You see, when, when you created, when you ran that thing, came, then made a directory and put all that stuff in there? Yep. Whatever you named it, uh, which I think that was the one line that was blacked out on this screen. It asked, what do you want to name your project? Hyphens and underscores are allowed. So I just named it test ABL. Uh, and it created the uh, ABL or test APL folder and just pulled everything in there. The one thing to be, I don't know if we fix this or not. Um, I believe it's a bug if we haven't, but. Uh, be aware of is there is a git folder in there and by default it points to the doxel <coughs> boilerplate repo so you might want to just delete the git folder and get in it if you pull this down um, okay now I believe I can okay so why should we use containerized instead of just having npm composer uh, PHP commands on the host. Any thoughts on that? Well, it sounds like one reason you do it is to maybe simulate a production environment. What version of npm do you have on your? Oh, uh, npm. Yeah, or node. Oh, I don't know. I use different ones. Exactly. Yeah. What version of node do you have? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Whatever it told me, I had. <laughs> um, when it's containerized, everybody has the same version. Uh, if you're using this, and this isn't just for Doxel, even though I'm one of the maintainers of Doxel, it's any of the containerized applications. It, it saves the settings across everybody. So everybody's using the same thing. Um, because you know, there's a lot of node packages that only work on you know, version or node version eight and up. And there is some uh, NPM blah, 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 yarn, blah, blah, front end, uh, <laughs> words, All right? Uh, reliability, that's what I'm talking about. How many times have you run into issue where it works on your machine, but not the coworkers or production? It's portable. So a containerized application can be shared among multiple developers. You saw how quickly I spun up the, uh, the boilerplate site. That could be your own custom repo that has everything there, you know, short of a database, because you never want to save a database on Git, but you still have everything um, there that you can just pull down and spin up. Uh, it's very reproducible. The environment is the same on multiple computers, so bugs can be reproduced across multiple computers. You don't have to worry about, well, again, it worked on mine or it broke on mine. Did I say broke? It broke on mine. Um, and because it's containerized, it only uses the resources needed instead of having to spin up an entire VM for each project. Like that image I showed a few slides back, uh, where a complete operating system for every project, very limited resources for each container and only what's needed. So what about storage? Yeah, did you have a question? I'd say a huge advantage is also that you don't mess with the host machines, PHP versions. Definitely. Like yeah. There, I'm not really going to get into it too deep, but um, if you do have PHP or Apache or you know things like that running on your host, there may be some conflicts of ports because like Linux and Python is one, for example. You don't want to mess with your right. Machines. Oh, definitely. <laughs> you really don't want to mess with that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, one of the one problem with any containerization is you know you have port 80, port 443, what port 53. I believe, correct me if I'm just saying the wrong numbers completely. Um, you know, if you have 
Apache, Nginx, whatever running on your host, those ports might conflict with any containerized version of that because uh, the con containerization forwards those ports from the services to the host machine, which I'll show in a little bit if we have time, hopefully we will, but I don't want to keep you past lunch because then people start getting hangry and amazingly somehow you all find pitchforks and right, for, for storage by default, well, does everybody understand what I mean by a volume? Does anybody not understand? Okay, a volume is storage for containers or services. Uh, it's persistent storage. Um, it could be named, it could be random string of letters and numbers if you don't name it, but it's so that if you have settings that you want to persist and if you're not destroying your your uh, your app, they will persist because it's a section of the hard drive that's blocked off specifically for those containers with these names. The default ones are CLI home, which is you know your entire uh, Ubuntu operating system, uh, and it'll save changes on there until you destroy the container or shut it down, uh, or not shut it down because it's persistent storage. But if you destroy the container then it'll destroy the volume as well. Uh, but if you make changes, say you want to add, like you were saying, Python, if you want to, in your containerized version of Ubuntu, upgrade to a different version of Python or downgrade, it'll save that. You don't have to do it every time you start it up. Uh, project root is within the CLI home, but it's specific to the project. And that's actually a mount where when we're working on on our code here, anytime we change a file here, it changes it within the container as well. So it's a it's a mount where it's like a sim link or a link. So any change is reflected within the container, or if you're working in the container, any change is reflected on uh, on the host. And back you go. And DB data. I'll give you one guess what it holds. Uh, and now each project has one of these. So each project um, prefixes with the name of the project underscore CLI1, project uh, root one, DB1. All right, so here is what we want. You know, this is the, the real uh, getting into the weeds on it and what the title of the session is all about. Here's what we want. and what, by we, we mean, or I mean I, because I wrote the talk and you all just have to go along with it. Um, we want a local environment that can be spun up easily by just pulling down a GitHub repo, needs to serve Drupal, needs to serve a Gatsby dev server, um, which in that case, it usually runs off a node, port 3000, such. Um, needs to be able to show the built Gatsby site, and again, replace Gatsby with your front end of choice. This is front end agnostic, I'm just showing how to put things together. And it simulates a major hosting platform. In this case, Acquia. So, ready to do this? Should go pretty smooth because I've already done it, but um, let's switch here. And I'll go through all the changes that are needed. Okay, so we're at stage one of the project. And for this, since I'm using Doxel, um, Doxel YAML is a Docker Compose file, or Docker Compose YAML. So if you know Docker Compose, you'll understand what's going on here. Our basic stack for this is nothing, uh, or not nothing, but just whatever is defined. And I didn't really get into the Doxel files themselves, but in our that .doxel folder, and honestly, that's all you need to make a project run in Doxel is a .doxel folder. If you run the start command, it will generate the files that you need within it. Um, but the files that you need are doxel.env, 
which are your environment variables, and doxel.yaml. So in uh, .env, you know, we can se uh, select which stack we're using. In this case, I put in Acquia, but there are a few that are available that we try to reproduce right out of the box. Um, depending on which service or which hosting service you're trying to reproduce, you can change the doc root to either doc root or web or cat food for dinner if you want to. It's really up to you. Um, the only thing, I don't know if we'll have time for this, but Xdebug, if you use Xdebug, you should use Xdebug, but if you, if you don't, you should. Um, you can enable it by setting this variable to, uh, to one, turn it off by setting it to zero. And I set the virtual host in here. By default, it will use whatever the folder name is. So as you can see there, well, hopefully you can see, if not, it says docs will be coupled there. So if I didn't change the virtual host here, it would just be docsldecouple.docsld.site. But I put in a separate virtual host to kind of keep things going, or a little bit more customized for this. All right, so when we're looking at stage one, we've got no customization here. So this will only serve a Drupal site on, um, on an Acquia type environment. Hey, magic. Um, so this is where I started doing quite a bit of customization. So before I get into this, let's take a look at what Doxel stacks are. Does anybody have an idea of what a, Doxel, what a stack might be? Hmm? Yeah, uh, kind of. Um, let me... Find where the okay. So no, I didn't. I'm saying I ended the current session. No. Hold, please. That's yeah, better. I guess it doesn't like it if I add another folder to the workspace. So the default services are all listed in the Doxel services YAML file, which is in where you're, when you download Doxel, it's where the app for it lives. And these are all defined, the defaults. Oh, Apache, we've got all the settings here. I'm not gonna go through everything. Uh, Nginx is another one that we have. And then our databases, MySQL, Maria, uh, Postgres. And then our CLI, by default, PHP 8.1, that can be changed. Varnish, Memcache, Redis, Solar, you know, all the things are available. Um, even Cloudflare Tunnel, which is great. Now, hmm? this is what's defining what the stack is? Defining what the services are. Um, so all the, service, or all the stacks are based off of this. Uh, so is it showing the full, it's not showing the files there. We're looking at stack Acquia now. And hopefully we are. Yeah, at the top here, it says what the, oh, that is horrible contrast, okay. Um, what the stack contains. So it has Apache 2.4, MariaDB, PHP 8.1, Varnish 6.6, Memcache 1.6, and Apache Solar 7. These are all to mimic what's on Acquia by default. And for the stack, we say web, it extends Apache. Database extends MariaDB, CLI extends the CLI service, Varnish. So it's taking the services that exist in that service file and saying we're going to use those for this stack. Same for uh, platform. 
if you want to simulate that, we're using Nginx instead of Apache. If we're using MariaDB you know, and using Redis, only a few services in there, but it's all, and that's not scrolling at all, I'm sorry. Uh, it, it's all defined in one central location and then kind of modularized out into the different uh, stacks. Did you say docs still gives you those things all? Yes. Now, each of those, you're not limited to, to those services. Yeah, just Jeff. I'm assuming there's one for Pantheon, given what you've been Yeah, yeah. There, there's Pantheon, just by default, let's see. Um, Pantheon platform, Acquia. Thought we had more, but I haven't upgraded or, or pulled things down. Uh, and it's very easy to roll your own, which I'm going to show here, hopefully, if it doesn't disconnect me again, like the jerk that it is. So my own services here, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm extending out services YAML, which is that file that held all the services we saw, extending out CLI. But I'm also building from a different Docker file. I didn't really get into Docker files. Does anybody not know what those are? Any questions on that? OK. Docker file is basically a set of instructions of this is. Docker files define images. So it's the set of instructions that tells an image how it should be built into a container. So I've created a custom Docker file. I'll show you that in just a second once we get to stage three. And set a few environment variables. And like I said, I wanted to have a static setup to show the Gatsby page as it's static. And yeah, I think I added a step that I didn't need, so. Yeah. So like I said, in the, in here, I want to be able to serve the built site and serve Drupal. So I'm doing this in a, more or over-engineered way for the sake of doing it in an over-engineered way. doesn't need to be quite this difficult or, or complicated, but I wanted to show you know, running two different web servers in a single application. And let's go back here. All right, so the static, this is going to be our static Gatsby site once everything's built. It's going to be at <coughs> static.virtualhost, which is asheville.doxel.site. Um, and we're saying that we're using the Apache document root as um, var www Gatsby public. Now that's the the root inside the container, because obviously I don't have this folder at var www. Um, now, in addition to serving that, I've got the web service, which is going to be Nginx. So that's the second web server. And this is the CMS. This is where Drupal will be served. So for that, again, we're pulling from the services, extending out Nginx. And the only change I make to the default settings is I change, instead of using the virtual, the standard virtual host, I add CMS in front of it to, to make sure I'm differentiating. Now preview, this is the node service. So we have a separate service just for node. Um, and that's where the Gatsby preview, the, the development server is gonna run. For that one, it extends out the CLI but uh, we're only using Node on that. So it's gonna, one thing I didn't mention is that the services for each service, resources are shared. So this one's extending out CLI, that doesn't mean it's completely rebuilding the CLI container and having a duplicate of it. For anything that it can share across, it's going to share. Not necessarily files aren't going, uh, what do I mean by files? Um, Changes you make in one container aren't necessarily going to be reflected in the other one, but 
everything that is defined in the container that's the same is going to be shared between them. So you're not going to have uh, extra fluff. Thanks. And I just say that it depends on CLI uh, to make sure that the CLI container runs first. That's a lot. Any questions up to this point? <laughs> I know this is showing a lot, and, but we've only got about 10 minutes, so I'm kind of pushing through so that we can all eat. Any questions? All right. So one, uh, I mentioned that I changed the Docker file. There we go. So I made a few different adjustments here. By default, it uses a different version of Node. I wanted 18.16.1, the most current one, because I like new stuff and it's shiny. Um, I wanted NPM 9.7. I'm defining that in the custom Docker file for the CLI container. I also want to make sure that Gatsby CLI is installed so that I can run that immediately. Um, finally, I need to make sure that I'm exposed at port 8000 because that's what Gatsby dev runs at. Now, because I'm exposing that port, that's not the same as um, mapping it 8000 to 8000 from host to container. That's just saying that port is available. Going back to my Doxel YAML file, I've got virtual port here, 8000. That means that when you go to preview.ashville uh, Doxel site, instead of having to put 8000 at the end, it just goes to 8000. So it makes, you save five keystrokes there. And you could use those five keystrokes to subscribe to me on Twitch. I, I had to do that, okay. <laughs> um, all right, so I believe that we're all ready to go. So I'm gonna run fin start. So now you can see there, I don't know why it's so weird. It's not showing the entire Okay, see there that it's starting the new containers, it's starting all the, the additional ones. You know, we've got now um, preview, web, and CLI, and static. Right, so we've got that. Now if I go to this URL, <coughs> Asheville Doxel site, It's not going to do anything because I forgot to add the host. One second. Okay, I guess I did. All right, great. So let me. If I go to just the vanilla, maybe vanilla is not the right word, but if I go to the base URL with nothing in front of it, it's gonna say projects missing because I'm not I didn't tell anything to map to the base URL. But if I will it please work. Go to CMS dot. We get umami. So everybody's familiar with umami, right? Our our wonderful demonstration site. So next up, we're going to want to, well, let me make sure that I have the configuration. Okay. So next, we're going to want to start up our Gatsby dev server. Now, I've written some custom commands just for the sake of spinning th or making things quicker than Gatsby dev. And what this is doing behind the scenes is running or going into the Gatsby folder, running npm run develop.
it shouldn't take too long. However, I've been having a love-hate relationship with Gatsby recently. Okay, good. Only 10 seconds. And that error, don't worry about that, that's just an error I have in my configuration. I was testing something that did not want to play well. Alright, so I should now be able to go to... Now you all get to see how wonderful a front end I do. Oh, this isn't the good part. So a nice thing about Gatsby, I don't know if other things like Next or Nuxt or any of that have this, is the development 404, where if you go to a bad page, it'll just give you the routes that work. Uh, let's go here. Ta-da! Okay, this is in production or in preview mode. So this is running off the Node server through Gatsby Develop, and just to show but I'm not completely full of crap. Our graphical is working here, so we're still getting the data from Drupal that's been pulled over. And then finally, we'll build it. So this might take a couple seconds. I want to get you out of here to go eat. Any questions, any comments? You want to tell me how big of an idiot I am? I'll take whatever. Yeah. So um, I guess maybe slightly off topic, but can you, did I say that you were using a new Drupal pod as part of this? Or? No, okay. I'm not. I, I did mention that you can use, or that Podman, um, Rancher, Desktop, and Lima are, are alternatives to Doc, uh, docker, sorry, dry tongue, talking's hard. Um, but no, I, I haven't looked into Drupal Pod at all. I, I, I'm familiar with it, just not is familiar Podman enough. To no. Podman is from uh, Red Hat. Uh, it's short for Pod Manager or Container Manager, Pod Manager, whatever. And now that I have this, I should be able to go to static. And we get the same thing. Uh, so it, this is being served from Nginx, Drupal is being served through Apache, and the preview server was being served through Node. All right, that would be a good time to clap. Uh, <laughs> Let's run through this now. We'll, we'll get through this really quick. All right, so yeah, bar was pretty low. So again, what's the point of all this? I mentioned all these things before, configurability, portability, it's containerized, it's reproducible. So what did we accomplish here? Quite a few things. Um, we got a local dev, dev environment that mimics production, in this case it's Acquia. Uh, create containers, separate get, a Drupal, Gatsby, Gatsby Dev and the static built site, and we made some memories along the way. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. I have like a slew of questions to ask about like an old time VM guy who's never made the switch. Okay. Now it's like now it's time to do it for the people, or if you have another time to do it. Um, I'm not going to hold anybody. If anybody wants to run and go get lunch. There's but... a group photo. Oh, okay. Okay, well then if we're all being held yeah, hostage for a photo. Yeah. So, yeah. Do, do, do you have access to these magic files you created? I would suggest um, downloading the Doxel app and getting a feel for that and going through the docs. I do have the GitHub repo. I wouldn't recommend looking at because I haven't up, I actually pushed up to <laughs> okay. uh, in a while. Um, but it is more alliteration. 
JD does dev decoupled Doxel demo. Um, and these slides I posted in the Asheville Camp channel on Drupal Slack. So, yeah. Where would the Doxel dev file that the, the Finn script holds and, and the other one, the Doxel build file, where are they living? The, the, the Finn uh, binary, well, I say binary just because it's the executable, but it is a bash script. Yeah. Um, that lives in your user dot doxel folder. So on Mac, it's tilde slash dot doxel is where it's going to be. And that's where all your global doxel settings are. For each project has its own dot doxel folder at the top or the root of the project. And you can have more project specific uh, settings and configuration there. And another level of that is if you want to test out things just on yours without worrying about pushing it up to um, GitHub or your repo, you can have doxel local.env or doxel local.yaml and make those changes there, play around with it, and those are by default get ignored in any of the um, boilerplates that you pull down, but they should be get ignored and not make it up to your repo. <coughs> Actually, before I get to you, Dan, you said you had a slew of questions. Let, let's get one or two out of the way. Sure, sure. Okay, so, um, again, I just like have a, a, I have a um, Windows box to hold it against me. There's just like a, a bunch of VM that I've been living for about maybe six years now. I knew it. <laughs> I thought I could trust you because you're yeah. basic in the back of the next. Um, yeah, so I, one day you must have made the transition from old VM to the current, you know, thing has been current for about six, seven years now. Um, <laughs> My question, okay, so the big thing that's helped me out is Xdebug and Xdiff stuff, mm -hmm. and it sounds like that's been solved. At least there's a better implementation, or it, easier implementation. Than again, I can't, my solution for, <laughs> for Windows, honestly, is download VirtualBox, download an Ubuntu box that's on exactly that, and <laughs> then get idea. Docker on there. But, yeah. um, yes, on, on here for what, where the setup really gets difficult, and I, this might be just Doxel, this might be all of the things, is making sure that your IDE is set up. Correctly. Right, and I was just gonna ask you, like, could you make a separate IDE for PHP Storm or something? I saw you, like, I just Googled while you yeah. talking about Coder, is that what it's called, that you have on Doxel? Is that uh, the name of your IDE, or is that? No, I've got VS Code. Oh, just VS Code, okay. Yeah, um, but I, I've i been doing all this in a live share session, so I'm sharing with myself, okay. um, which is what my therapist tells me to do. <laughs> and. Uh, that way, I can I don't have to go like this for everything that I'm typing out. But I do have a launch JSON file in VS Code for every project. Okay. Um, but for Doxel, I think from PHP 7.4 on, ships with Xdebug 3 by default. Uh, the docs say which port you need to use. I think we changed it to default back to 9000 instead of 9003, which for some reason they changed just because they wanted it to be over 9000. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm not sure what, uh, why that happened, but it's really easy to spin up. And I think um, there's a specific debug boilerplate. Don't quote me on that. I just remember somebody mentioning something about that that I haven't looked into. But it is really easy to get it set up. Uh, the hardest part is getting your IDE to work with it and, and listen to it. I mean, if I go and make this slight change here, And on most of my projects, I actually have a command fin debug off, fin debug on, which all it does is uh, behind the scenes runs fin, or, yeah, fin config set local xdebug enabled equals one or zero. Right. Um, fin up, which is a command to update with any changes you make. Uh, here it's just going to recreate the CLI. I'm not going to go through the whole xdebug process, but once it becomes ready, and this is just a health check thing, it times out to make sure everything is running. If I run bin drush, let's clear the cache. It's going to give me a nice little message saying that debug is connect, connect to debugging client, it gave the port, um, yeah. in that. So that tells me that, okay, xdebug's running. Let's turn it on. Yeah. Yes, I trust. It's me. I know I've made some bad decisions in my life, but I still trust myself. 
And so things like breakpoints and stuff, I'm assuming, are easy to check. Yeah, and uh, the reason for that is because it's a mount volume. Um, because when you set the breakpoint, actually, that is one thing. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, this is specific to. Is it going to show? Yes, specific to Doxel. It is in, or specific to VS Code. This is in the documentation because I wrote the documentation on Doxel for this specifically. I think it was a screenshot of my screen. Is you have to map um, the files to the workspace folder. Okay. So when you're running, uh, when you set a breakpoint, it's going to see it as var dub dub dub, whatever. And if you uh, run a drush command, it's going to see it as your local bin brush. You just have to map it to that so that it knows where to look for the breakpoints. I see. Do I have to call it JD? What are you going to call it? Let people go to the photo. If you don't want your photo taken, just. <laughs> 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 all right. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I got so close to photo time. Um, thank you. <laughs>